Hey, to all my female baggage droppers out there, I have a question for you. Do you like gold or silver? Well, at Brienne and Company Jewelry Store, you can find anything that you like. That's right. Brienne and Company is a jewelry boutique that has durable minimalist jewelry. She uses genuine pearls, local shells and sea glass, natural gemstones, and of course, precious metals. And these are all quality handcrafted designs by Brienne Light herself. Go and visit her at her website, brienneandco.com, or go to her Instagram that's always popping, at Brienne and Company. Thanks, Brienne. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, and all of my baggage droppers around the world, welcome to another episode of the Drop Your Baggage Podcast, where we talk to people that are dope, that can give you hope, and show you a technique that can help you cope. Now, if you are out there uh, watching this on Facebook or YouTube, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button, and... If you are um, out there on a podcast platform, please consider uh, giving a brother five stars and give me some feedback as well. I am your host, the self-talk engineer, Charles Woolfork. And I, right now I have right here, the man, Ryan Cass. Now, Ryan grew up in Southern California, right by LA and Charlotte, North Carolina. Now he's living in South Carolina and he works for Boeing through his company called One Day. That's W-O-N. D-A-Y. And he loves to help people build a foundation to success through his main, main technique, which is goal setting, y'all. This guy's a beast at it. Now, he loves writing out what you want, and he inspires people to set goals, build systems, and great habits. And of course, he is a big proponent. He loves, loves, loves networking and the support that comes from it. But man, most of all, what I love and appreciate about Ryan, he's got a big heart. He's a part of the Big Brother, Big Sister program, and he's been doing that for a while, too. Ladies and gentlemen, I bring to you Ryan Cass. What's up, Ryan? That is the coolest intro I've ever received. Uh, man, I'm fired up to be here. I'm, I'm ready, man. I, 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 was, I was attempting not to, like, just shout out a woo, like, while you were doing that. Like a Ric Flair, though. Let's go, yeah. Give me two, two claps and a Ric Flair. Woo! I'm ready. I'm ready. Hey, 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 man, there's so many amazing things that I've already said about you. But please, for the other eight people that don't know anything about you, tell, tell them what, what I haven't said already. A little bit more. Yeah, so a little bit about me. Um, you may hear my dog behind me. I've got a dog. Oh, um, good. We are dog supporters right here on the <laughs> Drop Your Baggage podcast. <laughs> yeah, so um, I am very passionate about the... Is that okay if I... I don't know. Go if ahead. I'll, I'll, I'll edit this out. Go for okay, it. No okay. Sorry. <laughs> it's all good. Uh, <laughs> if, I, if I clap, she thinks that, that someone's at the door. Oh, and I see. Going, uh, starts going a little nuts but the yeah. mic probably doesn't catch it but sorry so uh, a little bit about me um i am very passionate about the community that's probably my my favorite thing to talk about favorite thing to, to be involved with to do so as you mentioned i'm very involved with big brothers big sisters i've been doing that for four years now and really i just i've had two different little brothers through the program and I just incorporate them into into my normal life. So an ordinary experience for for people like you and I, even something like going to the beach, can be an extraordinary experience for them. And I'm really passionate about the youth because I've grown up in a household that has um, seen generational curses. That's that's what I saw uh, growing up. Um, lived in a household with uh, subject to alcoholism and adultery and a lot of uh, different, you know, mental and uh, emotional abuse that's just been passed down and passed down. And uh, I've seen how damaging that can be to our youth. And I've seen how easily our youth can become the next person to carry on some of the things they see at home if it's not for making a big change or for having someone involved in their life. So um, that's really what I've kind of did. I'm dedicated my purpose to. I believe that's why I'm here. And that's that's the coolest thing about me, I think. But um, in addition to that, I am a big runner. I compete in marathons and ultra marathons. That's, that's anything above the normal 26.2 miles. So most recently, I did a 67-mile uh, fundraiser run with one of my best friends, Nick Lighton. And uh, I, love, I love challenging myself and I love traveling. And uh, 
that's me, man. I love goals too. And, and, and my, my favorite thing that I do in addition to my, you know, my day job at Boeing, I've got my company one day W O N because everyone has said one day I'm going to have this one day I'm going to have that, or one day, you know, I'm going to have this job. And when that day comes, it's a win. So hence one day W O N and the mission is to inspire people to build a foundation for sustained success. And I believe that foundation starts with writing goals down. And that's what allows you to win today. Amen. Amen. That's Amen. me. You are a beast, dog. You're a beast for just running a marathon, dog. I don't like to run down the street. Okay. <laughs> you, you are a beast. So, like, what gave you this love for community that you have? A few things. Um, you know, one, it was seeing that the the impact it's had on me, right? I've, I've had, I've been fortunate to have some great mentors in my life that are very invested in giving back and seeing that just inspired me to, to give back. And then also, you know, why I'm so focused on our youth is because, um, you know, what I saw growing up is I don't, if I can help our, another youth or a group of youth, um, change the course of their life and their family's life and their future family's life through spending time with them, then, hey, I'm, I'm all for it. I believe that's, um, that's my contribution in making the world a better place. And I just, I believe that I love studying leaders and, and leadership. And I believe that the best leaders that we look up to are, are known for giving back. And the reason why they're um, so highly regarded as leaders isn't because necessarily because of their, their companies or how smart they are or how innovative they are, but more so how charitable they are and how committed they are to helping the world, making the world better. And that's why I love the community. Amen. Amen. Like I, I grew up the same way. You know what I mean? Like um, my mom was a single mother, so she was always working. So a lot of the folks that helped me stay on the right track were my coaches and mentors that I have from from school or from the community. So, you know, like shout out to uh, my football coaches out there who were always tough on me, but always kept me in practice and off the streets. Uh, my my basketball coaches, um, you know, my my bosses. I started working when I was 13 years old and those guys really gave me a foundation of having integrity and a work ethic and gaining rapport was something that I definitely learned but the, <laughs> like early. Yeah. But uh, the 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 community, uh, the community that I had around me all supported me um, because they felt as though I was a, a good kid, a nice kid, but also, you know, just uh, because they thought I was a nice kid, they wanted to make sure that I did something like I reached my full potential and did something great with my life. Um, you were talking about leaders and I wanted to ask you, who are your favorite leaders? Ooh, my favorite leaders. So, um, one that I talk about all the time, I love Tony Robbins. I think he's a, he's a pretty popular name. Um, oh, yeah. but I love his story and what he does to really bring the best out of people. Um, I love his books, you know, unshakable. I've got right here on my on my bookshelf. But what I love about Tony is that he, he started from nothing. Um, and I, and I love those stories when people are, are self-created be, like, like him, because what it shows you is that we all have this power within us. We really do. And sometimes it just takes knowing or studying or reading a person like Tony mm -hmm. to know that, Hey, we all have it. So that's why, you know, I love him so much. Um, another one of my favorite ones is uh, David Goggins, you know, and he's, he's a little unconventional and, yeah. and I would say his leadership style, but he's just someone that I draw a lot of inspiration from. And especially, you know, I mentioned, I love the ultra marathons and that's one of his big things, but mm -hmm. um, those two guys really mean a lot to me because of, you know, who they are and they, they back up what they say they yeah. do. Yeah. And, and yeah. And then my third, if I had to go with a, a third, um, my most recent favorite book is flaming hot 
It's the guy that is by Richard Montanez, and he's the guy that uh, created Hot Cheetos. This guy was a janitor at Frito Lay, immigrant family janitor at Frito Lay, and he learned how to do every job in the factory and had an idea. Goes up to the CEO while he's the janitor, you know, and and says, "Hey, like, how about this hot Cheeto? This would really tailor to you know our our Hispanics that like a lot of heat." Yeah, you know, and and my mom's Colombian, like we, and I I can attest to it. We love some heat, baby. <laughs> um, but anyways, he had the idea, was bold enough to reach out to the CEO. Now we have flaming hot Cheetos. But what's cool about him is that along the way. You know, he, he worked his way all the way up to senior vice president of mm. um, Frito Lay and Pepsi. Mm. Is you know he was he's now he teaches people. He he gives back to students. He yeah. is unveiling his story to inspire the next generation of people. So um, I like bringing him up because he's not he's not a typical uh, CEO. You know, he's literally a janitor that and someone believed in him and. Here we go, man. So mm -hmm. I, I love those three. Hell yeah. Like um, <clears throat> like um with with Tony Robbins and David Goggins, they're they're two different styles, but they're also the different styles that I, I could recognize on a football team. See, like with Tony Robbins, he's one of those dudes that natural born leader, you know what I mean? Rah rah, you know what I mean? Like gonna get you excited, gonna get you hype, gonna lead mm -hmm. you, gonna, gonna kind of um, nurture you throughout that process of also you becoming the leader and you becoming your best self and like has been there war tester I mean like um, he, you know tested tr tried and true like the guy is just you know one of those dudes that has the charisma of of you know who he is you know one of the, the best in the business but David he's one of those dudes that like he will show you he's not a, like he's not necessarily a, a you know, it's going to be all right. Let's do this together type of now. Nah, he's like, get off your ass. You know, you yep. can, like, let's let's do this. It's time to work. It's time to grind. He is the type to show you. And then he, he's going to do what he needs to do. And then he says, follow me. Like, this is exactly what you need to do with. You're one, one of these type of people, one of these type of people that are lazy and that don't want to do anything and that aren't reaching your full potential. Then follow me. I, I've already done it. I've already been where you've been. Follow my lead. Let's go. I'll show you the path. I'll walk you through that path. You know what I mean? Like, but it's going. It's not going to be an easy one. But man, the fire. Once you get through the fire, though, you're gonna feel so successful. Right. Stay yeah. hard, man. Stay, Stay hard. hard. Yeah. <laughs> hey, shout out to Gaga Show. Yeah, Hell man. yeah. Hey, so like <clears throat> you say, you love providing extraordinary experiences with uh, the Boys and Girls Club, yeah, and the kids that you work with. How uh, what mm -hmm. other ways do you find yourself wanting to uh, provide an extraordinary experience uh, besides with the Boys and Girls Club? Ooh, that's a yeah. good one. So so I think, you know, with 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 Big Brothers Big Sisters, you know, like a normal thing for us My even <laughs> even if even, no, no, you're good. Even like even here, ordinary experience where we may be having a conversation here. If I had my little brother sitting next to me, that that'd be an extraordinary experience for him because otherwise he's probably not going to have someone like at home that's mm -hmm. like, "Hey, I want you to sit down and see what a what a business conversation, what a life conversation looks like. Mm -hmm. Um, or yeah. So I, so I like to, um, take my little, you know, with me to different events or like volunteering even, mm -hmm. um, because he can see, Oh man, this is a group. Like there's groups of people that just come out here and volunteer like, and do good things. Like this yeah. is cool. Cause a lot of these youth, like they're, they can be angry at the world and they kind of have every right to be, I mean, I understand why I was angry at the world too, because of what was going on at home. Yeah. Um, so, so as far as, you know, the extraordinary experiences for them, it's really just incorporating them in, into my normal life. But mm -hmm. how do I provide extraordinary experiences for others? You know, you know, what I would say is an extraordinary experience is when I see people understand and feel the power of goal setting. Mm. When I've in, when I've worked with people and gotten them to write down their goals for the first time, and then they're letting me know how their life has changed, dude, that is the coolest feeling. Like that's, 
I always say that the greatest accomplishment that I'll ever have, it's not, it's not whatever title I earn yeah. or award that I receive. It's seriously getting the phone calls from people saying, Hey, you helped change my life. Wow. And all I did was in reality was show them that, Hey, you know, a whiteboard and a pen or a notebook and a pen and paper mm-hmm. can change your life, man. Bruh, bruh. That's hey. an extraordinary experience. W- Man, I want to go deeper into go set because obviously I have missing something in my life. You know what I mean? When it comes to this, like you make me excited about go setting. So first and foremost, let's go over the why and then we'll go over the house. Why are you what why are you so passionate about goal setting, bro? What what made you like this excited about it? I'm passionate about goal setting because 10 years ago when I started out at college. I went to the Citadel, which is a, it's a military college here in Charleston, South Carolina. And the reason why I went there, two reasons why I went there was one, um, the focused and driven person you may see today right now or here right now didn't exist 10, 10 years ago. Mm. Um, I was very unfocused in high school. I, I cared more about athletics than I did academics. I, I loved wrestling. I was super focused on that, but obviously wrestling doesn't pay the bills. Um, so, but I always had this vision in my head of being a business owner and, and working my way through corporate and I'm thinking, okay, it's great to have this vision, but this vision ain't going to become a reality if something doesn't change. Mm. So, so, um, and then in addition to that, as I mentioned before, you know, I grew up in a household that was subject to generational curses. And if I didn't make a change, I very well could be the next person carrying on, carrying that torch. And I refused to carry that torch. So that's why I went to a military college. And then as I started, started studying different leaders like Tony Robbins and Tim Cook, Michael Jordan, what makes them who they are, mm-hmm. they all attribute their success to goal setting. I'm like, okay, you know what? Let me give this goal setting thing a try. Mm-hmm. And I'll never forget. So I started writing down started writing down my goals in this book right here. This has every goal I've written down for the last 10 years. I call this my success book wow. and accomplishing just some of those goals, Charles, like I was hooked. I, I'll never forget a phone call that I made to my parents right before the end of my first semester in college. And I told them I was going to be on Dean's list. By the way, this never happened to me in high school. Yeah. So I called them and told them, you know, Hey, and I'd only been gone for four months and mm-hmm. I was going to be on Dean's list. They didn't mm-hmm. believe me. <laughs> right. and, and I don't blame them for not believing me, but they didn't believe me. And they're like, what the heck did you do differently? Or what Kool-Aid you drinking? What crap you smoking? <laughs> and I was like, these goals, yeah. you know, it, and writing it down, man, because what it does is it, it makes you so focused. It shifts your behavior and you just naturally start doing things that align to your goals. And I, I'm addicted to it now, man. Like this is my drug. Yeah. Who, who taught you how to, um, who taught you how to set goals like that? Just, just going and, and researching. And then right. now, you know, I've read a lot of books on goal setting or mm-hmm. I listen to a lot of different leaders and, um, one book in particular that really helped me out and really refined my goal setting was atomic habits by james clear word because I was just listening to that in the car That's i crazy. love that book because yeah. you know you know what really makes and this took my goal setting to the next level because before when i first started i just started writing a million things down like if i showed you some of the early my early lists from yeah. like 2012 2013 yeah. you just see this massive pile <laughs> now it's much more organized but really i focus on systems because when it comes to goals, what really allows you to accomplish your goals is having mm-hmm. systems in place. Right. So meaning if you have a goal to run 500 miles, mm-hmm. you can't run 500 miles in a year. If you wake up on December 31st, you're like, oh crap, got to do that one. You're not running 500 miles in a day. Like You have to have a system of running a certain amount of miles per week, yeah. which means that you know a system of waking up every day or most days of the week and putting on the shoes and and hitting the pavement. So, so yeah, I've been inspired through a combination of just researching different leaders and then spending a lot of time reading books and, uh, of people that, you know, have 
kind of perfected the craft and mastered the craft. And that's where I am now. Beautiful, bro. So let walk us through it, man. Like, how do we, because I know, you know, we are, we've all heard of smart goals. Well, I say a lot of us have heard of smart goals. That's what I know about. But like, obviously you got a different sauce, man. I want to hear bro. what's going on. Walk yeah. Yeah. So where, where it all starts, it starts by asking yourself a couple questions. First mm. off, what's important to you? And, and I want y'all to write down everything that comes to mind. I mean, everything, whether it's family, fitness, faith, community. And, and the cool thing here, the beauty of it is that with this method, there's no one right way, right? Yeah. So what's important to me, hey, that's what's important to me. It might be totally different for what's important to you. But right. what I'm getting at here, when you put all that on paper and then you see it from there, okay, now what are the, like, really, what are the five things that are truly most important to me? Mm -hmm. So, so looking at this whiteboard, I know that listeners can't see this, but my whiteboard that I have behind me mm -hmm. with all my goals, I have it broken into quadrants. Mm -hmm. So I focus on personal, professional goals, fitness and health, and then one financial, and then one day my business. So I've got five, but those are the things that are most important to me. Mm -hmm. when I really think about all the different things in life, right? And then from there, the next question is, how do I want to make an impact in this world? What do I want to accomplish? Mm. And, and then from there, you start writing those things down. Okay, um, I want to launch a podcast that's going to reach thousands of people across the world so they can start hearing the message and importance of goal setting. Mm -hmm. Boom. That's one of the goals that's on the, on the list this year, but that's really, how do I want to make an impact? I want to, I am sharing the power of goal setting. So what's important now you've got your categories. Yeah. Now, how do you want to make, make an impact? Now you've got your goals and that's how, I, that's how I do it. And then from there, um, yeah, I don't, I don't have a fancy acronym yet. Maybe I should, but, um, you should have the way I like to say it, just simply put, if it's December 31st and you're looking at what you wrote down, how do you know, what's your measure of success? How do you know if you're successful? Meaning if you write down, read more books. Okay. What does success look like? Is it read 10 more books? Is it read, is it read six books? So you need to have either a quantifiable measure or some sort of timeline. So for instance, um, launch a podcast. Okay. Launch podcast by February 1st. Boom. Because launch podcast isn't really something you can quantify, mm -hmm. but I can still put a time frame to it. So now when I look back, you know, on December 31st, or actually I schedule a kind of a mini goal setting summit, um, just a day where I look at all of my goals for the year and my performance and, yeah. and then I set my 2022 goals. Um, when I'm looking back, there's not a goal on that list that I won't know what the success measure is. Yeah. So that's my process. That's where I, that's where I start. So what's important to you is really the, the first question you ask. Yeah. And then from there, you, those are your goals. And then yep. you, and you, then you said from there, that's when you, do you, like you start to create your systems based around your goals. Exactly. So so then from there, so once I have the goals written down, like, and then I'm going to steal a piece from Atomic Habits because I'll, for instance, one of the goals I have on there is read 24 books. So that's two book, two books a month. Yeah. So that's my system is the easiest way to build a habit is to stack it on top of an existing habit, right? Habit stacking, which comes from Atomic Habits and James Clear. So for instance, Every day that we get to wake up, there's probably something you do right off the bat, whether it's grab your cell phone or go brush your teeth or go get a cup of water. Like these are things that are just, it's instinct, right? Mm -hmm. So if you want to build a habit, st stack it on top of something that you're already going to do naturally. Yeah. So for instance, let's say you want to get into the reading habit. And the first thing you do when you wake up is you brush your teeth. So then you're going to write out after I brush my teeth, existing habit, I will read a book, mm -hmm. new habit. Mm -hmm. And you literally write that out because then what, and put it in a visible place because when you're brushing your teeth, that becomes the cue to go grab a book and start reading. Mm. And then as you're brushing your teeth, you're thinking about a book, almost like as you're getting dressed, 
then you're thinking about, okay, I need to grab car keys, go to right. work. Right. 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 So that's how you, so that's how you do it for your goals. And so now like, I feel like I'm walking out the house, butt naked. If I don't read my book, I'm dead serious. Yeah. Like that's just how, wow. it, it, how it's become ingrained in my mind. Yeah. Now I'm a little behind on the reading goal, but I still do read every day. Mm -hmm. So, so yeah, that's habit stacking. And <clears throat> once you have your goals, okay, what are your habits? What are your system? What's your system mm -hmm. that enables you to get there? Boom. So, Boom. so, okay. So let's get this right. What's important to you. Yep. What's the marker for your success? Habit stacking systems is habit stacking and the systems like together habit stacking is part of the system it's so part it's part of the system gotcha. what's important to you mm -hmm. and then how do i want to make an impact like what do i want to accomplish right and then from there impact. okay so now i've got my goals now i know what i want to accomplish based off what's important to me mm -hmm. and then what's my system for accomplishing that goal how do i uh what's going to enable me to get there bruh that's and that's all based off the habits for, uh, and that's the thing that's transformed your life like that's forever. It. Yeah. Yo, yo. That is because what it's done, man, what it's done is I can't walk downstairs and not see those goals every day. Mm. And what I also have on there is my vision board, which is something that I've mapped out, you know, looking ahead three decades. Wow. So what, wow. what do I really like truly want to accomplish in this life? So my, yeah. my goal board is actually fed off my vision board. Um, and the vision board, the way I have that structured is, you know, one of my mentors helped me with this, but think about it like this. If you're sitting on a beach one day, mm -hmm. looking back on your life, mm -hmm. you know, we're, we're out there in Kauai, man, you and I are out there at Hanalei mm -hmm. having a cold beer and we're like 75 years old chilling mm -hmm. and, and we're like, man, what, what would we have wanted to accomplish? And then boom, you start writing those, those things down like yeah. backwards. Yeah. So now like in the present day, mm -hmm. okay, what am I doing to make, to, um, make wow. that day on Hanalei Bay when we're 75 years old, yeah. looking back, like all of those things come true. Exactly. Like, like that, have that day not exist. Yeah. So, so this, this, this practice, this whiteboard has been so powerful because i see this every day it's in the front of my mind every day uh there's no guesswork as to what i want to accomplish in this life it's it's right out there for me and and i love any opportunity i can to help people uh do the same especially students because the earlier you you incorporate this into your life the better not only for you but for your family for your future family for anyone that knows you really yeah um I believe this is how we, this is one of the ways that we change the world. I really do. Right. For sure. Like, cause what you're talking about is not just short term, like success. You're talking about a long-term vision as well. And mm -hmm. it's not, and, and these goals aren't just uh, good for you. They're good. They're good for the whole. How can I make an impact on the world? Yep. That's crazy. So like, you know, like, of course, anything that, you're only going to be as successful. No, no, no. What did my mentor? My mentor just said that my business will, will never outgrow me. So therefore, mm -hmm. I have to grow as a person I in like order that. for my business to grow. You see, mm. so I have to become better. I have to be, I have to do more personal development. I have to have more knowledge. I'd have to uh, be a, a better salesman. I have to give better presentations. I have to give more value to the world in order for my business to grow. Well, it's the same thing with the goals. You have to be, become better to have, well, a higher consciousness of goals, but also to have better systems as well. So you can reach those higher goals too. So it can, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to have that conscious that to build that consciousness and to become a better person over time. So you can get all the success and abundance that you want. Couldn't agree more. And I love that, that saying, by the way, you, you won't outgrow your business. I'm putting that in my back pocket. That's, Dude. that's good stuff. <laughs> yeah. Shout out to my mentor, George. He's amazing. Mm -hmm. uh, the, so like, does it give you a certain amount of confidence? Like how has your life changed internally because of your goals and the way that you set them and the way that you achieve them as well? 
it's helped me with my mindset, man. Like I, in, in confidence for sure, you know, my, I don't believe, I, I do not believe that there's anything that I can't accomplish that I set my mind to. Mm. It might not happen right off the bat. It might not happen immediately, but I'm, I know that this system works and, um, it, it's made me believe in myself and my abilities. Um, and, and let me be clear too. I've, I have X marks on my, on my goals list. Like I've, I have failures and, and there's some things even this year that, you know, I'm, I'm, they're pretty ambitious targets that I might not hit, but, um, I will get them eventually, mm-hmm. you know? And so it's, it's helped me there. It's, I believe that it's helped me become a better leader because through this, I can teach other people how to, I'm, I'm teaching other people, Amen. <laughs> um, how to, how to incorporate this in their lives. So the, the impact is, is far greater than just myself. And that's what I love about it the most. And, and, and another thing too, there's, there's, there's an amazing compound effect that comes with this because I love when, you know, I teach someone and then they tell me, Hey, I just, I just shared this with five people and they wrote down their goals or, you know, so you never know how many people you're, you're really impacting, um, even working with one person. So any, any small victory means me or any small opportunity really means the world to me. Um, cause you never know the, the true impact of it, but yeah, it's given me confidence, belief in myself, um, and the ability to, to help others. I mean, I was just, I was just speaking at a school today, actually, matter of fact, this afternoon about this same thing. I so I wouldn't get invited to do that if it wasn't for, um, being so invested in this and, mm-hmm. and practicing it. So what you're t- like, uh, from what I hear you saying, um, you mentioned so many different things. So you mentioned that you're joyful. I mean, you lit up like, like freaking Christmas Eve, when I even mention goals. So it gives you joy. It gives you confidence, a sense of fulfillment, especially when you achieve goals, but also when you show someone else how to achieve goals. And then that goes into contribution because of the compound effect, growth because of the person that you have to become, and the sense of significance. I mean, you know, it's like you, I I, I know you're going to, I know you're going to do that. Uh, That's why I said it like that, because like, you know the six human needs, right? Tony Robbins, six human needs, certainty, uncertainty, love and connection, growth, contribution, and significance, right? Mm-hmm. So it gives you that bit of significance to know like, man, I, I got I got this, this like major tool and I can teach it to others. I'm not saying that you're like um, somebody that is boastful or cocky, but, you know, or, or looks for that recognition, but you know, we like to we like it. And also it gives you a sense of certainty because, which is very important for all my baggage droppers out there, the certainty that you feel, the certainty that you know, that you know, that you know, that you are going to achieve those goals. I mean, like if you were to boil it down into one phrase, you trust the process. Trust the process. Yes, sir. hundred (laughs) percent. Yes. 100%. 100%. Right, right. Like you are so you're so confident about it. Like I feel the energy from you, right? You're so confident about the process. Like, yeah, I know it was lofty this year, but just wait till next year. You know what I mean? Like it's coming. It's coming. Yeah. Right? You know? Yep. Yep. There, th- that's a that's a pretty cool, like that's a pretty cool way of thinking and of living. And I can see why you're so passionate about it. In fact, it makes me rethink my whole life. Like Oh, I know I've written down some goals and every time I write down a goal, I achieve it. But like to actually have a system and to have it stacked like that, man, you might have just reformed my life. I'm going to be one of the ones texting you like, hey, bro, look what I did. <laughs> hey, that would make my day, man, because I know I know you mentioned significance. Yeah, I mean, and I was like, and, and, and that's true. It's not obviously the 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 top reason why I do what I do. I mean, it's sure you're right. It's it's nice, but the coolest thing ever. Like, like if you text me, you're like, Hey man, I just did. I just started habit stacking. Like that's way cooler than whatever accomplishment I have because, you know, I, I was able to 
help you learn what habit stacking is. Right. Mm -hmm. So it, at the end of the day, I think, um, impact is what I strive for, you know, the, not necessarily the dollar signs, but impact. By all means, bro. I, that's, that's one of the reasons why I mentioned it last. I spent the most time talking about it and validating why I said it, but it's the, one of the last things I said, I said significance to uncertainty, but contribution, the compound effect yep. is what you spent the most time talking about. Yes, sir. The compound effect and the fulfillment of it. So, yeah, I, I, I mean, I feel you. I just I, I knew you were that type of guy. I'm like, nah, he's not going to like that. <laughs> but I got to say it. <laughs> you did it. You did it well. You did it well. <laughs> Thanks, bro. You, you might have done that a few times before. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, so hey, right here on the Drop Your Baggage podcast, we love to talk to people that are dope, that can give you hope, but also t uh, show you a technique that can help you cope. So we're going to go ahead and shift to the other part of the uh, of the um, podcast that we are here for. And that is also to help you, man. You help so many people. And now it is my opportunity to serve you, bro. Like, so I am so honored that you are here, man, on the on the podcast with everything that you do for your community and everything that you're going to do for the world, that it's an honor for me to uh, have you here with us uh, so I can help get something off your shoulders. <clears throat> So uh, just for the audience real quick, I, I do this. Uh, we are going to be using an NLP technique, a neuro-linguistic programming technique called mental and emotional release to help uh, drop some baggage here today um, with that. Uh, oh, yeah, Ryan, I am not a therapist. I am not a counselor. <laughs> I'm not a psychologist. <laughs> and a disclaimer. Disclaimer. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> this is for my lawyers right here. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm pumped. I'm pumped. And I'm, I'm a little, you know. I've been a lot more vulnerable this year, mm -hmm. so I'm I'm ready to roll, man. You know, I'm a little a little. I'd be lying if I told you I wasn't nervous because I there's only a few people that have heard what I guess we're about to roll into. But mm -hmm. yeah, I'm ready, man. Let's get it. Let's get it. So we're going to be releasing some hurt and disappointment today. I've had my fair share of hurt and disappointment myself. I'm going to go ahead and be open and let you know, like, of course, uh, if you've listened to this podcast, you know that I've never met my father before. Uh, he left before I was born. Uh, he and my, like, you know, I don't know what it was. He's He was white. My mom's black. Might have been some interracial tension. Uh, my, my mom is also a tough lady. You know, like uh, she might have kicked him to the curb and, ne and he never came back. Who knows? Who cares? But what I know is when I was a kid, I took it personally. And therefore, um, Father's Day's uh, fa uh, Father's Day, that was a disappointing day. Um, um, birthdays where I didn't get a call or I didn't get a, a present. That was a disappointing day. I was hurt by those things. Um, you know, I was hurt by girlfriends in the past. You know, I've, I've definitely had a lot of hurt throughout my life. Um, you know, I think more than anything, it was the hurt of myself as well. I had to forgive myself a lot for doing some of the things or not doing some of the things that I that I knew I shouldn't be doing, like doing some of the things I knew I shouldn't be doing, <laughs> but also not uh, reaching my full potential as well. Uh, so yeah, man, like that's that's a bit of my journey when it comes to hurt and disappointment. You know what I mean? Man, so I appreciate you sharing that. You're a good man. You know, it, it's always inspiring when people have had various things happen to him and, and for instance like i couldn't imagine uh not having a father you know not knowing my dad at all right um and here you are out doing great things and, and helping people uh, cope and yeah so just much respect much respect that's true man so like what has been uh your uh journey with hurt and disappointment Woo. All right. Here we go. Um, yeah. So, so for me, it started early on and as, as far back as I can remember, I mean, around three ish years old or so, um, as I mentioned, you know, there, there was a, there's been a systemic trend of alcohol abuse in my family. And anytime that, uh, you drink a lot that leads to poor decision-making um, so, so with that, you know, life growing up, uh, was very much, um, being the middleman, even from when, you know, again, from when I was a kid, uh, between my parents with, uh, dad coming home 
very intoxicated most nights of the week and then out partying with people from the restaurant and and uh that led to lots of pretty nasty arguments pretty late into the night and and just being fearful um of what could happen and uh that led to yeah um adultery and i thought my parents were going to split early on and uh because of all that um in addition to that, just different threats of people threatening, okay, well, I'm, I'm just going to leave now, or you know what, this, this won't be a problem anymore because I'm going to be gone, meaning like suicide. Mm-hmm. Um, so just kind of hanging those things over, over, over our heads for years and years and years. Um, so I saw a lot of that growing up, and it made me angry at the world, man. I was, I was kind of an angry kid. <laughs> Uh, and, and even going in, going into my teen years. And then I, I got over that. I, I forgave, I forgave, uh, you know, my dad for everything and, and it takes two to tango. Um, you know, there were things that, that my mom brought into, but, um, and then in my adult years, uh, <laughs> whew, um, my most recent hurt, was yeah going through college you know i i met a woman my sophomore year and we dated all through all through college came time for graduation she was at university of south carolina i was at the citadel and uh, we both i got the job offer for boeing in st louis and uh, she ended up you know coming out there with me to go to grad school at washington university great school and i thought everything was going well and next thing you know, um, in between her first and second year of grad school, you know, you've got about a six to eight week break. And so I figure, hey, when when else in life are you going to have six to eight weeks off until you retire? I mean, you're not. So I uh, just kind of started, you know, traveling the world and whatnot. And then uh, right before she was supposed to come back, you know, started getting a little things started getting a little strange. I was like, you know, communication started fading and um the red flags that I'd ignored in the past were kind of coming, popping up again and, um, got the surprise of my adult life when I came home from work one day that when I thought she was supposed to return and uh, everything in the house was gone. (laughs) (laughs) And I was like, Whoa, you know, um, I was like, what's all this closet space, man. (laughs) And, and, uh, And it, it, that wrecked me, my, I mean, it shook me up. It didn't break me, but that, that shook me hard, man. Mm -hmm. Cause I was like, holy crap, no no warning signs. Like what did I do wrong? Uh, it, it crushed my confidence. I mean, it crushed my confidence. So it's kind of made me, you know, fearful of getting hurt again. And, Mm -hmm. um, yeah, you know, I just, and, and between what I saw growing up, that kind of made me fearful of, of hurt and, and relationships. And then going through what I went through, I was like, it, you know, in my mid twenties, I'm like, damn, this sucks. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Real talk. So that's, that's my hurt. Yeah. Real man. Yeah. That, that right there. Well, I, I can see why, you know what I mean? It's uh, everything is like stacked on top of one another. And yeah. it's, it's something that, you know, I would definitely, definitely have in the back of my mind too. It's like that, like you said, like it's a fear of commitment. Like, man, I, I don't want to go through this again. You know what right. I mean? Right. Uh, let's let's go to a physical part of it. So, like, when you think about those memories from the past, like with your father and your ex girl, where do you feel it in your body? You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Where do you feel it in your body physically when you think about those? In my heart. Your heart. Yeah. In my heart, you know, like I know when something's wrong in my gut and yeah. I've learned not to ignore my gut because mm-hmm. some of these things I, I probably could have seen what I saw with the woman coming mm-hmm. and I, and I turned it off. I was like, no, no way, no way. Not me. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, like I've always kind of had this sense, uh, from early on and I don't know if I developed it early on or maybe it was from seeing all the things, but it was almost like I could predict all right, we're about to have a showdown at the house tonight. And sure enough, boom, yeah. um, there it is. And, but yeah, I feel it when I think about it you know, I feel it, I feel it in my heart. Boom. Anywhere else? Um, I mean, it, it gets, you know, I don't, I don't dwell on the past anymore, yeah, you know, yeah. again, cause it's, I've got this goal setting has made my mindset so freaking tough. And then oh, yeah. that's part of why I run a lot too. Like yeah. I, it's meditation for me and it just makes it tough. 
<laughs> um, but heart in my gut. I mean, yeah. I guess sometimes like I can get a little mental, you know, in my head thinking, thinking about like, there's probably a couple days a year where in, I get in my head, I'm like, dang, like, could I have done anything to prevent what mm-hmm. happened, you know, at home or could I have done better? Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, but, but that. mainly in my heart, but yeah, I do feel it elsewhere. Got you. Got you. Uh, well, I only ask that because like there's a physical, mental, emotional, spiritual connection. So like the things that you got that gut feeling, you have the gut feeling for a reason. You know I mean, you're, you're, it's not just your emotions, but your spirit might be telling you something like, man, watch out. Cause here it comes. Yeah. So your, your intuition has been strong for a long time. So with your intuition being so strong, something that also like that, you know, you are great at, I could say, controlling is the physical part of you because like the mental physical part of you, because I mean, you're a ultra marathon runner, but I could, I, I hate four, five miles, dog. <laughs> <Much so, laughs> 20 something, man, forget that. So um, that's why I ask just because, yeah. you know, after it's funny because after we go through the process, that's going to be gone. That's the I best can't part. Wait. That's Let's the best go. part about it. Yeah. All right. <laughs> I did. All right. So um, all you got to do are four things. There's four things that you need to do for you to have a profound experience. Number one, you got to use your imagination. Okay. Number two, uh, you have to you have to um, follow directions just like you follow a good recipe or Google Maps. All right. And number three, you have to trust the process. Know that I'm your guide and I'm going to be leading you through this easily and effortlessly. You got it. And number four, you have to see things from everyone's perspective in all events. So that even means that you see things from your dad's perspective, from your mom's perspective, and from your ex-girlfriend's perspective. You got it. All right. That's us up. Now, we're going to create an imaginary timeline. With your imaginary timeline, your past can be to your left, to your right, or behind you. If you were to know, where's your past? Say that again. Your past can be to your left, to your right, or behind you. If you were to know, where is your past? Behind me. Where's your future? In front of me. Of course. All right. All right. Now, I mean, I say, of course, because it's your future. Like, you only see things in front of you. Like, yeah. I mean, as a, as a marathon runner, I can only imagine you can see your future ahead of you. Yeah, that's um, where I do my best thinking. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. All right. So with that, is it all right with your unconscious mind for us to release this hurt? and disappointment today and for you to be aware of it consciously let's do it awesome what is the root cause of this problem the first event which when disconnected that will cause this problem to disappear if you were to know when was the first time that you felt hurt and disappointed or disappointed between the ages of birth and seven how old were you three do you have a specific event in mind uh it was a series of events um, that I saw just at, at the house with the, the fights and, and whatnot, and, you know, showing up to school late, lying to teachers about why I was showing up late and yeah, but I, I, I started that from a very early age. How old were you? Um, when I, I, you know, when I first started really remembering what was going on, mm-hmm. like three, um, I mean, I think the most painful night. I don't know how old I was, maybe five or six was the day that, you know, my, my dad got caught, uh, you know, cheating on my mom. Mm-hmm. Um, and I'll never forget that night. That was the worst. Um, cause that, that was, that was bad. That was, uh, cop shows up, at, you know, cops at the house. Oh, it was bad. It was bad. Yeah. Yeah. You don't <laughs> need probably, to go into it. I got you. Yeah. Know. I don't want to go into it. Yeah. But, good. Uh, good. Yeah. It's all yeah, good. But, but that's when I, rem- I remember all that stuff. Okay, for sure. Yeah. Um, let's go back to three years old, and okay. then we'll clear it up from there, and then we'll clear up the f- uh, five years and, and older. Okay. Cool. So you can go ahead, and this is a guided meditation, a, system- a simple systematic guided meditation. So you can go ahead and close your eyes, relax, and let me know when you're ready to drop your baggage. All right. All right. Now, all right. Now, just imagine floating up above your timeline and float behind you and flow deeper and deeper and deeper into the past above that first event in which you felt hurt and disappointed when you were just a little boy about three years old 
I want you to hover above that event. Sing that whole event like a fly on the wall. Let me know when you're there. Okay. All right. Now just stay right there. Don't move. See the event from a third person point of view. Now, just ask your unconscious mind what it needs to learn from the event. The learning of which will allow you to let go of the emotions easily and effortlessly. Your unconscious mind can preserve the learnings so that if you need them in the future, they'll be there. Just tell your unconscious mind to preserve the learnings. Now, keep your eyes closed. And I want you, while observing the event with your eyes closed, tell me, what did you learn from the event? That I'll never carry that on in the future, what I saw. And that I'm such a stronger person and leader because of what I saw. Mm. Is there anything that you had to tell your dad? Yeah. What was that? You're better than this. Yeah. Yeah. That's what's up. Now, what is something that you can take with you into the future to make you a better person? Focus on being the best version of myself not just for myself, but that's what's going to allow me to ensure that the course of my family and future family never looks like the course that I saw early on. That's right. Mm -hmm. Very good, man. All right, man. So now just imagine floating up above your timeline and flow deeper and deeper and deeper into the past behind you, above the dinosaurs during the prehistoric age. Let me know when you're above the dinosaurs. All right. All right. Now, as you're above the di dinosaurs, just imagine floating deeper and deeper and deeper into space to where space and the atmosphere connects. And imagine your timeline is the size of a fingernail. Let me know when you're there. I'm there. Okay, listen closely. Float very, very high above your timeline, above each and every event in which you felt hurt and disappointed from birth until now in chronological order. Don't skip one event that has a charge on it. Preserve the learnings and let go of all the hurt and disappointment all the way back to now. Go. I'm good, I'm strong. <laughs> awesome. Float down into your body and open your eyes when you're ready. Welcome back. Wow. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> Good stuff. How I've never that? I've never done anything like that. I've, I've listened to some guided meditations, but I've never actually done it like live and um wow. I just feel light, man. Like yeah. in a good way, not lightheaded, just like light. Like like I just ran, I just lost a bunch of weight. Like I'm like all the, everything on my back, you know, the baggage is gone. Yeah. <laughs> Drop your baggage, right? <laughs> yeah, man. That was cool. That was some heavy, heavy stuff that you were holding on to, huh? Yeah. 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 I've never thought about it like that. Wow. I told you that, <laughs> that, that mind, emotion, physical, all that it twines in together. So you don't even, but you don't even notice. Yeah, kind of, I like this. Uh, I, I I still like this um, cartoon. Uh, it's, it's called Dragon Ball Z, and they used to wear like weighted clothes. <laughs> it's, it's feel like that. Like you're just used to wearing it now, you know. And yeah. Now, now that it's off, it's like, oh. God. oh. Now is that something that you know I could I can do you know 
more frequent, like on my own, or is that something that like, like I can listen to it? Like, like I'm going to listen to like when we, when this recording comes out, like, I mean, I guess I can ru- just listen and run, run myself through it again. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's cool. That's cool. That's cool. <laughs> yeah, heck yeah. Hey, for all you guys out there though, let me talk to the audience real quick. For all you guys out there, please don't try this at home. If you want to try it out, go to charleswolfork.com. Let me lead you through it. But Hey, I, I, I'll, I'll tell you more after this is all this done. Right. <laughs> yes absolutely yeah yeah y'all need to go through this live for real i was just looking at this like man like i want to that's cool that's cool <laughs> i'm speechless <laughs> hey so let's go ahead and test it out to see make sure that everything is all straight so um so do you smell bacon do i smell bacon yeah not right now Okay. I asked that to get Am your I mind. Am I supposed off. to? No, I asked oh. that to get your mind off the meditation. No worries. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Can you uh, remember a time in the past in which you used to feel that old emotion? And go back and notice if you can feel it, or you may find that you cannot. I mean, I, I, I can remember what happened, but I'm yeah. not like, I done really, there's not like, when I thought about it before, then I kind of felt like the the heart or the, the mind or the gut or the weight. I'm like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> um, cool. Very cool. I want you to imagine going out into the future to an unspecified uh, time in the future in which if it would have happened in the past, you would have felt inappropriate or unwarranted hurt and disappointment. But it's the future now. So see if you can find that old emotion or you may find that you cannot. So I put myself in the future and I'm looking at those events in yes. the past. Yeah. Or it's like you're looking at yourself in the future and you thought about, you know, your father or your ex-girl or something that made you feel hurt. Do you think you'll still be hurt in the future? No. Congratulations. You just released a bunch of hurt and disappointment. You're a magician, man. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much hey so a lot of people that, that have listened to, or that are listening to this podcast may not have gone through it so please uh describe like you know how you feel in and like anything that you you uh, found that was different or whatever you know what i mean like let's just talk about it yeah i mean i've never done anything like that so i just feel a huge release not that man i didn't feel it's not like i like like i mentioned like these are things I don't think about often, right? Mm-hmm. Cause I mean, I'm so, in, that's why I'm so intentional about doing what I, what I do with the goals and, and helping people. But I didn't realize, I guess the weight that I did have, you know, I almost feel like I dropped a weight that I didn't know I was carrying mm-hmm. is kind of how I feel right now. Mm-hmm. Um, okay. yeah, no, no, keep going. And, and I feel I'm attempting to look back and really like draw that same emotion that I used to feel when I did think about those things and it's gone. I mean, not to say, like I said, it's not like I just uh, erased it from my memory and I don't think that's the intent of it. But when I put myself back in that spot, yeah, I'm, I'm, there's nothing there. It's, it's, it's kind of like um, dynamite without the wick. So if the memory is the dynamite, right, and then the wick is the negative emotion, anytime that you feel that same negative emotion, it get, that's the spark of the wick, and then boom, you feel me? Yeah. But if the, uh, if the memory doesn't have the emotion, you put the, the wick out of the dynamite, all you have is dynamite, but it's not effective. You can throw mm-hmm. it around. You can do whatever. Don't put it near fire. But, you know, yeah, right, right, right. <laughs> you know, you can throw it around. You can do whatever, and it's not explosive anymore. I feel that. Yeah, yeah. All right, bro. So you you are so interesting because, number one, your vow to break generational curses, it kind, it kind of, like, became even more enhanced because you're like, I'll never do this to the generations to come. Like, walk us through that and how you felt with that just how I felt through the, through the meditation. Like, yeah, I just yeah, feel yeah. like, I feel like the, the, hmm, I feel like when I make that statement now, it's just even further emblazoned in stone, man. Like mm-hmm. 
this is this is happening like and this is real um and i can say that now without having that un i can say that now without having that uh weight that i didn't know i had before mm -hmm. and i can say that now with even more confidence mm. i can say that now with even more confidence like i'm breaking this trend man yeah like i'm freaking <laughs> you know and and i'm not gonna allow the what happened to me with that with that woman to impact my future relationships because it, it kind of has you know it's made me hesitant um and yeah I'm, I'm ready to roll man like i feel i feel good i i just i feel good <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's a common trait a common side effect of going through this process on the drop your baggage podcast is um uh, a, a speechlessness <laughs> yeah <laughs> it's like I don't, I don't know what to say like you know um, yeah what also was inspiring to me was the fact that with your dad, what you had to say to him was, you're better than that. So you still believed in him. Like, I love that. You still, that love is still there for him. You're better than that. You know, like, yeah. Explain, yeah, that means explain us your mindset around that. Yeah, man. You know, let me make one thing clear. Like, I, I love my family and mm. I'm I'm tight with my family and mm. and despite what happened i mean hell my dad and i we still joke around man like i don't and i know he's better than that he is better than that I, he's my you know i've learned a lot from him mm -hmm. um i learn a lot from him and there's no you can't you know on my, one of my notebooks here it says learn from yesterday live for today hope for tomorrow mm -hmm. like it doesn't say change yesterday we can't change yesterday i can't we can't change the events that i just talked about yeah um you can learn from them you can you have two options with everything in life you can let it um shape you or let it break you to mm. choose option number one and that's what i've what i've chosen man like i don't i've got no reason to to hate my dad or 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 to or my family because of the things that have happened, man. Like this is why this is what, you know what this has done. It's created an opportunity to make the family better for the future, man. Mm -hmm. And, and I get to play a part in it now. So, you know what, if anything, I'm not going to say thank you for doing those things, but right. Hey, there's an opportunity and it's time to capitalize, man. Like, and you're coming with me, but it, it like, does, we're doing this together. There is a sense of gratitude that happens with everything that happens in your life. Because I, I've thanked, I've literally thanked my father for not being around like i yeah. think because i wouldn't be the man that i am today i might not be in Kauai. i might not have the amazing girlfriend that i have i might not have the relationship <laughs> with my mom that i have you feel me you, you know what this made me think of actually you know what speaking of the woman i was talking about what up she you know forgot like i remember when i moved to south carolina after like so right after all that stuff happened boeing called me they're like hey you want to come to charleston to start this program yeah. that this rotation program that i was in mm-hmm I'm like, heck yeah. You know, <laughs> had that not happened, I would have had to say no because mm. she's still, still in grad school. But anyway, I moved out here. I noticed I still said some of her things. Mm -hmm. And I was like, man, there's a lot of things I could do right now. I could, I could burn this. I could, you know, whatever. Right. But I, I mailed it off mm -hmm. and, and I wrote just a little note, you know, and I said, and I'll, I'll never forget this. I think I took a picture of it. But what I wrote at the bottom was, thank you for making me a better person mm. better and stronger person yeah hell yeah like, wow i i literally wrote that i'm pretty i got i'm gonna find i gotta find that photo but yeah. i underlined it i was like thank you for better, making me a better and stronger person yo you already knew yeah yo, mindset like, you're not gonna break me yeah your, your mindset is so impeccable dog it's <laughs> crazy <laughs> it's crazy <laughs> But to your, it just made me think about that to your point. Like you said, you thank your dad for, for that stuff. Like, obviously, you would never wish for that, right? No one would. No. But, but it gives us opportunity to make things better and to grow and to learn. And sometimes, some of the best leaders that we know today, some of the best people that we know today are those people because of these events, man. So, Dude. yeah, I guess, you know, there is a sense of gratitude in, a, in an odd way. But right. You're right. 
Yeah, You're right. very odd. Like, You're right. Like, um, I mean, the universe unfolds perfectly, right? The universe, like, and I think that, and I feel that the universe unfolds in our favor. You know, my favor, your favor, everyone's. Um, what does Tony say? Tony says that things don't work. They, that's like something isn't working against you, it's working for you or something like that. Mm -hmm. As I digress. One thing, listen, I'm a 35 year old kid. I don't know much. Okay. I don't, I don't know much. And I would like to, to like really emphasize the point that hurt people hurt people. And with your father, like, go, like going to alcohol, he might've been going through something that's sad, yo. Mm -hmm. We don't know. We'll never know what he was going through. You feel me? So yeah. with him, him being hurt, the people around him were also going to be hurt as well because of his habits, right? His habits weren't something that was for a family necessarily. So his habits just led from one thing to another. And also, we're only doing the best that we can with the resources and consciousness that we have. Your drug is is, is goals, dog. I'm sorry to let you know. All right? It is. <laughs> it's goals. No, you're right, man. He's, he's in goal setting anonymous over here. Okay. I'm, I'm addicted. I'm addicted. <laughs> help, <It's> help me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so his you know he had different things that he needed to do there, there, i'm sorry he had his consciousness was around going to diff something different than you when it came to dealing with his life you see and it's yeah. like with that that's that's where you can see like oh man he only knew he, you only know what you know and with the resources and consciousness that he had he was only re resorting to just he was doing the best that he had with what he what he got i feel know? you so it's yeah. like that's that's one of the things too you know it's i was i had i when i had to come to that with my mother um for still with my mom you know my mom she's she's a goddess she can have so much success as an entrepreneur but you know she chose to work for someone else i'm like all right mom you know but i'm like she's only doing the best that she can with the resources and consciousness that she has um and I just know that about everybody for that matter. We're only doing the best that we can with what we got. 100%, bro. That's yeah. 100%. <laughs> I love this. I love where this is going. <laughs> I'm just saying that. That's all I wanted. Just a, a, a point of view from your pops that you may not have really got. I there. never thought about it that way. But yeah, no, you're right. You know, sometimes we got to. That helps. That helps even hearing that because I'm like, it, 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 and it's going back to what we said, like, how do you feel, you know, and where's that, do you have that emotion anymore or that? And like, it's gone, but then I'm like, you know what? And then I've got a whole nother angle to look at it now too. And it helps yeah. and it's yeah. good. Thank you. Thank you. Good. Well, I'm, I'm, well, thank you for listening. You know what I mean? That's why I'm like, yeah. I, don't, I don't know much, but I do know these little principles. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, man. Uh, um, bruh, I'm just, I'm, I'm super happy for you that you showed up for your divine appointment. Like, thank you so much for allowing me to serve here on the Drop Your Baggage podcast. Thank you. Thank you. This this is um, I didn't really know what to like. Like I said, I had a whole mix of emotions, right? I mean, I was fired up. I am fired up. Um, but then I'm like, man, I don't know how is this going to make me feel. What's going to happen here? And this <laughs> is. This, it, I, hey. The Drop Your Baggage name makes. Even more sense, 100 percent sense. Like, like I was like, what am I supposed to feel? Like, I, what? I don't feel like I have like baggage. Like, I don't, I don't, you know. But I, I just appreciate you, man. Like, this was, this was amazing. It really was. And and folks listening, you should go through this. And I'm gonna tell my people about this. Thank you for this. I appreciate it, bro. Hey, shout out to Kyle King too. Kyle S King out there. Kyle. Hey, shout out to him. He's the one that referred me to uh, the homie Ryan. So thank you, Kyle, for allowing him to show up for his divine appointment. And uh, hey, I'm uh, please, Ryan. Before we get up out of here, give us. I mean, you've given us so so many dimes. I mean, so many nuggets. Give us one more, man. One more word of wisdom. Oh man, man. It's uh, after after all the wisdom you just dropped. You know, you know, I'm a big proponent of, of writing goals down. And I think that that's really how you, how you build your foundation for, for sustained success, start with goals. And then really your systems is what enables you to get there. And also uh, having the right people in your corner. Um, but if I had to, to leave folks with, 
not just that, but um, one thing that a mentor wrote down in one of my graduation cards that I'll never forget. And it's just, this is simple, but, um, and I just told the kids at the college that I was at today, uh, when I left, this was the last thing, last thing I said, I, I said, do things right and do the right things. Be, be good people, uh, make someone's day. And you can do that just by being nice, man. Just, just be a good person. That's, that's all I got. That That's, that's my wisdom. <laughs> Man. Hey, thank you so much, bro. You are a beast. I love it. This is a hell of an episode. A hell of an episode. And thank you all out there. And I'm going to talk to the audience. Thank you all out there so much for your support and your attention. I appreciate you with all my heart. And you know I love you. Um, if you like this episode of the Drop Your Baggage and you're on YouTube or Facebook, please consider hitting the like and subscribe button. And if you're on Facebook or if you're on a podcast platform, give your brother five stars and some feedback. Uh, once again, right here on the Drop Your Baggage podcast, where we talk to people that are dope, that can give you hope and show you a technique that can help you cope. I am your uh, host, Charles Wolfwork, the self-talk engineer. Until next time, ladies and gentlemen, take care of yourself and take care of one another. Peace. <laughs>